All right. My name is researcher Ro Lucian, and today I'm going to be talking about SCP-3737. Item number. SCP-3737. Containment class. Safe. Disruption class. Dark. Risk class. Notice. Special Containment Procedures The Foundation has purchased the land that contains SCP-3737-1. Various signs have been posted around the area declaring it as federal property. Trespassers are subject to local law. A proposal to allow personnel to visit SCP-3737 during reunion events is currently being reviewed. Description SCP-3737 is an interdimensional anomaly that manifests as a tropical island. The size of the island or the surrounding ocean has not been measured due to SCP-3737's limited accessibility. Per its anomalous nature, the island has no relative location and exists in its own reality. SCP-3737-1 is the entrance to SCP-3737, located on the bridge in Greenland. The entrance takes the form of an unstable Einstein-Rosen spatial anomaly, which is connected to a similar anomaly on a dock on the southern portion of SCP-3737. SCP-3737-1 is typically inaccessible, but can open at highly irregular intervals. These periods have been designated as reunion events, and last exactly 24 hours before SCP-3737-1 reverts to its inaccessible state. The spontaneous appearance of a wall of fog on the bridge housing SCP-3737-1 indicates a reunion event. Passing through this wall is effectively entering SCP-3737-1. Footnote 1. Since its opening on October 6, 2016, SCP-3737-1 has not reopened. SCP-3737-2 is the collective designation for the inhabitants of SCP-3737 which are various species of animals commonly kept as house pets. Instances of SCP-3737-2 are all present in their adolescent age, and show no indications of poor health. These entities will engage in playful activities either with each other or with the various animal toys found on SCP-3737. No aggressive or territorial behavior has been observed in SCP-3737-2 instances. Exploration Log 3737-1A Due to the rarity of its appearance, a research team was granted permission to explore the nature of SCP-3737-1 when it spontaneously opened on October 6, 2016. A security detail was assigned as a precautionary measure. All personnel were required to wear Class A environmental hazard suits until the location at the opposite end of SCP-3737-1, later SCP-3737, was deemed habitable. The transcript of the subsequent video has been added to this file. 3737-1A Video Transcript Begin Transcript The video is taken from the perspective of Dr. Lawrence's suit camera. The first few seconds show Dr. Lawrence behind Dr. McCall and Dr. Rostova as they approach SCP-3737-1, with Agents Crawford, Bardot, Alexander, and Ramirez flanking. Proceeding to enter the anomaly. The team crosses through the wall of fog. Camera feed glitches for approximately 2.4 seconds before being re-established. Frame shows the research team on SCP-3737's dock. Is that a blue sky I'm seeing? I never thought I'd see something so mundane. Hold! Entity sighted on the beach. The frame shifts to show a group of K-9 SCP-3737-2 engaging with a length of rope a few feet from the dock. They appear oblivious to the presence of the team. I have a clear shot. Hold! Do not engage. Dr. McCall turns to face Agent Alexander. They might be friendly. I'd rather one of us determine that. Bardot, go and initiate contact with one of the entities. Aye, sir. Agent Bardot breaks away from the main group and approaches the SCP-3737-2 instances with his weapon raised. One of the instances, a male Airedale Terrier, notices Agent Bardot and turns to face him. The other instances remain oblivious. If it moves in a way you don't like, Shoot it. Aye. The instance moves in front of Agent Bardot and sits. Agent Bardot points his weapon at the entity. Advise. Hold your fire. Bardot, initiate physical contact with the entity. Crawford, Ramirez, be ready to engage. Agent Bardot extends his arm in front of the entity. It slowly approaches and places its head under Agent Bardot's hand. Bardot proceeds to rub the instance's head, which causes it to pant. That doesn't look very murderous to me. 
you should know as well as anyone that anything has the capability to be. Ah, oh, Catherine, is this really the time? <sighs> what, Vernon? Am I not allowed to be cautious? Being cautious and being extremely presumptuous are two separate things. I'm not being presumptuous. I'm taking my job seriously. Would you two be quiet? I think you're scaring them. Several of the instances have distanced themselves from the team. Did they bring the whole zoo here or something? Hang on. This dog has a collar. Agent Bardot investigates the collar on the SCP-3737-2 instance. His name is Felix. It has a name. They all have collars. Who do these things belong to? I don't think that's important right now. We should continue moving. Several hours pass. The team explores several areas within SCP-3737. The island is revealed to contain several different territories, including forests and prairies, along with instances of SCP-3737-2. Has anyone noticed the sun hasn't moved since we got here? Perhaps it is an anomalous property of the island. Who knows? An instance of SCP-3737-2, a female boxer, appears out of a nearby bush and approaches Dr. McCall. I guess she likes you. It appears she does. Dr. McCall notices the instance's blue collar. He pauses for a moment. Is everything alright, Ludwig? Yes, yes. Everything is fine. That instance just reminds me of an old friend, is all. I could check the name tag. It is extremely implausible that that friend is her. No harm in trying, then, Doctor. Permission to approach the entity? Granted. Be cautious. Agent Bardot crouches in front of the instance and inspects its name tag. The name is Gypsy. That was her name. So? I'm... I'm sure a lot of dogs are named Gypsy. What makes you think that this one is her? Gypsy also had a blue collar. I remember you talking about Gypsy. I thought she died. She did. We, uh, we had to put her down when I was 16. Then what is she doing here? Well, it's still in my best opinion that we do not get so... Dr. Ostova is alerted when another SCP-3737-2 instance appears. She turns to face a male Siamese cat wearing a black collar. That's... That's not possible. What is it, Catherine? Dr. Ostova approaches the instance and also removes her suit. She grabs the entity and holds it close to her chest to which it begins purring. Dr. Ostova begins to cry. The hell is going on here? I have no idea. Doctor, mind explaining? He looks just like my old Siamese. Same collar and everything. Look, he even has his name tag. Catherine, I'd be very careful. This looks just like 3773. This looks nothing like that, Vernon. Pike was batshit crazy, and so was her cat. Dr. Rosova spots a feather on a string, which did not show in the film prior to her arrival. She picks up the stick and proceeds to play with the SCP-3737-2 instance. Dr. McCall has ceased interactions with his SCP-3737-2 instance to respond to his earpiece. That's odd. What is it, Ludwig? Bridge team is reading a loss of stability in the portal. They are suggesting we return to camp as soon as possible. The dock isn't that far from here. An hour or two at least. Will it hold? They're saying it'll last another two hours before it collapses. Wonderful. I can take Jasper, and and Dr. McCall can take Gypsy. <sighs> Catherine, you know how strict we are about dimensional entities. I don't think I need to remind you what happens if we bring them back. I can't just leave him here, Vernon. I don't want him to get lonely. We've seen plenty of other instances that seem very happy to provide company. We need to go, Catherine. He was my best friend when I was a kid. I haven't seen him in years, and you you expect me to just leave him? Just like that? Dr. Rostova, it isn't safe for you here if you stay much longer. It's my cat. If I want to bring him, I can. I take full responsibility. I... I don't see why you aren't happier to see your dog, Ludwig. Of course, I'm happy to see her, Catherine. She... she was my best friend growing up as well. 
I would love having someone like her back, but she might not even exist. Even if she does, I don't want her going through the Foundation. That wouldn't be right. Fine. If you don't want to bring her back, that's fine. I'm still taking Jasper. I think you should listen to Dr. Lawrence. I cannot permit you to bring something of that nature back with us. I don't care about the regulations. It's a cat, Alexander. It isn't going to kill you. We don't know that yet, Doctor. Put it down. He's coming with me, and that's that. Now, I suggest we return to the dock. Dr. Rostova, I'll be forced to put you in quarantine if you do not release the entity. So be it. Jasper is coming back with me. Dr. Rostova carries her SCP-3737-2 instance as the research team returns to the dock. Dr. McCall's SCP-3737-2 instance has been following behind. Everyone accounted for? I believe so. Good. Let's get this over with. Wait. What's wrong? I, uh... I never got the chance to say goodbye to Gypsy. My father took her to the vet, and I didn't go. I'd like to say my goodbyes before we go. You know, just in case. Doctor, we don't have much time. I know, Alexander. Just give me a moment. All right. Hurry, though. Dr. McColl turns and kneels to face his SCP-3737-2 instance. He begins to rub its head. Goodbye, girl. Thank you for always being there for me. I love you very much. Dr. McColl proceeds to hug the instance. The team then crosses into SCP-3737-1. Upon reaching the other side, Dr. Rostova notices her SCP-3737-2 instance is no longer in her arms. Agent Crawford and Agent Bardot restrain her as she attempts to cross back into SCP-3737-1. SCP-3737-1 then becomes unstable and closes. The fog dissipates. End transcript. Addendum 3737-1b Investigation into the nature of SCP-3737-2 has been postponed until SCP-3737-1 becomes stable. Upon further analysis, the caller tags found on the SCP-3737-2 instances featured no extraneous information besides the name of the instance. The appearance of various pet toys in SCP-3737 is also currently being investigated. Addendum 3737-2b Dr. Catherine Rostova was placed in a quarantine following her return under the suspicion she was suffering from emetic effects. She was released a week later after clearing several cognitohazard screenings. Dr. Rostova is to meet with Site-24's psychiatrist on a weekly basis until such a time where she is deemed emotionally stable. Alright, that's all I have to say about this subject. for watching and a special thanks to all my patrons especially my tier 4 patron serene tan if you want to help support this channel go ahead and visit my patreon for early access to videos skip recommendations and other patreon benefits